since we um, are a bit short of time, I will start here and hope that uh, all the little meetings will turn into one meeting eventually. Hello, my name is Johan Linden. I will be your moderator here in this, uh, in this session. And uh, I'm Swedish, so you have to bear with my Swinglish here. Thanks to our wonderful translators and the headphones, it's possible to speak English, Gallego, or Spanish, and we'll try to communicate. There will be some microphones in the, in, out in the room eventually, but we will start with a warm-up here, and we'll try to uh, speak quick. For the audience that is following us, following us online, uh, it's possible for you to interact on Twitter and Facebook, if you want to engage in this conference, uh, and that's through both the days here. Uh, and I'm very sorry if you have come here and thought that you, this first day, this morning, would see an, a session full of action and good television. It is not any good television. It is not any action. You won't see any funny PowerPoints or any animated PowerPoints, but you will have the best minds in Europe. Some clever thinking. And after all, that is what public service also is about. And clever people can be entertaining, so let's be entertaining. The conference is about the regional television and the future. This session is very complicated. It's about identity. What is regional television? What is region? So we will focus on that, and I have a fantastic panel with me. Rosa Villas, our host uh, from TVG. And this is a terrible gender-balanced panel, as you can see. So all the ladies in the audience, you have the first three questions uh, when it comes to you. Rosa Villas, our host, uh, you're uh, heading a company with a language and cultural mission. Uh, Olaf Carlson, he's heading national television, national news, and regional news, and a lot of websites. Um, David, you are head of a hell of a lot, sorry, English stations. Radio, television, and websites. I think it's 49 websites or something. 42 websites. Pascal, he's the odd bird here. He's the only non-broadcaster, but he's head of all the regions of Europe. Uh, I bet you have a good definition of regions. And Costas, Constantinos, he is leading a national channel from Thessaloniki. So his region is broadcasting all over his country. Is that different from broadcasting from Athens? We will talk about this. But first, just as a warm-up, uh, if you can, in three sentences, what's top of your mind, what's happening in your company? Rosas, what's top of your mind? Hello, good morning everybody. Welcome to Santiago. Eh, Bos días a, a todos y a todas. Eh, preocupación por lo futuro, pero esperanza. Hopeful. Olaf? Top of the mind is digital revolution, digital revolution and the digital revolution. It's uh, all about us going uh, mobile, us going on internet and everyone else also doing that in order to consume news, uh, programming and everything else. Four sentences. <laughs> David? Uh, quality. Delivering quality is crucial. Uh, if we don't deliver quality, it doesn't matter whether we're local, regional uh, or national. Quality. Including microphone quality. <laughs> so quality is top of my mind. Without quality, whether we're local, national or regional, uh, I don't think it will matter. Uh, and I think I worry about what the internet will still do to regional television and how we will create a sense of identity around the video we make when fewer people are watching linear television, because I don't think we've cracked that. Okay. Pascal? Yes, good. Good morning, everybody. That's not, that's not quality. <laughs> uh, joke. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, the Assembly of European Regions, in one word, in one sentence, is defending and promoting the regional fact, the regional fact, the regional dimension in Europe. So we have special regional glasses, and we analyze everything with those regional glasses. And you will see the difference between analyzing 
with the national point of view or the regional point of view. Kostas? Quality, but how to... How to ignore that the mobile takes over quality and uh, trying to capture the imagination and the feelings of the audience. Uh, crisis is a Greek word. We must remember that the audience are very tired, but they are not viewers anymore. They are users. We have to keep it that in mind. Thank you. And as you noticed, I didn't mention this man because he doesn't know anything about regions. He only thinks about international perspectives. Philippe Caillon, Head of Development at Euronews. Do we need regions? There has to be something wrong with you because the other guys, they talked a long time in those. No, it's difficult. This is interactive. Apparently, at the very end of the, of the table, <laughs> nothing, nothing works. But, um, of course, we are not regional, we are uh, global, but the difficulty of these times is to make uh, global things understandable locally. So to be, as they say, global. So we try to be global, and so we are happy to be there to present global things to regional channels and to, to initiate some cooperation with you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I'll start with some specific questions now. Uh, Rosa, your company has the role uh, to uh, um, work with the Galician culture and language. Besides the language, what is the difference between what you do in programming and a Spanish channel? Both. Eh, diferencias, pues eh, muchísimas todas. Mm, nuestra comunidad, a nuestra comunidad de Galicia hoy no se entendería sin, eh, sin la televisión pública de Galicia. Eh, como decía antes, o presidente, a nuestra, a nuestra comunidad eh, fala en lengua propia. Entonces, eh, a televisión de Galicia fue a ferramenta que contribuyó a normalización de la lengua, pero que además vertebró Galicia. Vertebramos, eh, vertebramos un país. Achegamos eh, paisajes, como decía antes el presidente. Fijemos que hay gente de la costa, conocero interior, es todo, e todo contrario. Llevamos 27 años trabajando en eso, apostando por la lengua. Y e ahora mismo estamos haciendo eh, con una programación en galego eh, para los nenos y e nenas galegos. Eh, con ATV Gadúas es un esfuerzo casi titánico pero somos conscientes que desde ese servicio público que estamos a prestar tenemos que hacerlo pero eh, aparte de estos elementos tan diferenciadores como puede ser la cultura y la lengua la eh, eh, televisión de Galicia eh, diferencia de una televisión de del resto de las televisiones públicas o de la televisión española sobre todo en la proximidad los galegos reflejan en la televisión de Galicia. Los galegos y e galegas eh, atopan a su cotidianidad cada vez que encenden o su televisor. Eh, pero no solo desde el ámbito de información, deportes, cultura, eh, folclore, cualquier tipo de, de información, pero también entretenimiento. Entretenimiento eh, de prime time, lo no que somos eh, prácticamente líderes, feito por la industria de Galicia. Por lo tanto, ten o ADN en oso. Está feito por nos para nos. Entonces, eh, ese quizás es esa parte de ese secreto. Las nosas ficciones compiten en igualdad de conducciones con menor coste, hay que decirlo, para representantes del sector que están aquí, eh, que las das televisiones eh, estatales, eh, ainda que se sean públicas, eh, son líderes. Son líderes de audiencia. Eh, Circon, premio ano pasado, Matalobos, eh, no sé si acordades. Es decir, ¿y por qué ten éxito? Porque está feito por nos. Okay. Nos mismos sabemos eh, o que nos gusta y yo damos a o público. Would you say that your um, your mission or what you're doing is developing uh, the Galician culture and society, or is it conserving? Eh, las dos cosas, las dos cosas. 
eh, nos eh, somos eh, guardianes guardians de que se ponga a salvo eh, toda esta tradición, toda nuestra cultura, nuestra lengua, no perder ese foco. Non? Te decía antes también el presidente, somos a memoria de Galicia. Pero al mismo tiempo, eh, como servicio público, también tenemos la obliga de, eh, de, no sé si es o mejor exagerado de decir, liderar. Pero sí que tenemos eh, un cierto compromiso con eh, también empujar a nuestro país cara a pues, esa modernidad, de cara a las nuevas tecnologías, a las nuevas plataformas. Eh, vivimos en un mundo conectado, en un mundo global, no podemos ser alleos, no podemos eh, vivir en un reducto. ¿vale? Entonces, lo que tenemos que hacer es intentar que convivan esas dos eh, circunstancias. Eh, eh, además, yo creo sinceramente que a manera de sobrevivir de que una organización como la CRTV pueda sobrevivir adiantando esos tiempos. Thank you, thank you. And Pascal, now we've heard one way of defining regional television. How do you define regions in your organization that covers all of Europe? Thanks for this question, uh, uh, Johan. Um, so the Assembly of European Regions, we are 253 regions all around Europe, from Norway to, uh, to the Turkish regions and from the Azores to the Russian Federation oblasts. So it means uh, uh, a real regional identity, but with a lot of differences. What is our definition of regions? Uh, it's an easy one. Uh, it's in fact the level just below the national level. So it means, uh, if I take some examples, In the Netherlands, we have the, the Dutch provinces. Um, in Swiss, we have the Swiss cantons. In Germany, in Austria, we have the lender. In Belgium, the regions or the communities. Uh, in Spain, of course, uh, the autonomous regions. But in fact, uh, so that's easy, but there are a lot of differences. Of course, we can compare uh, Spanish uh, regions with uh, Belgian regions or, or Italian regions because they are regions with legislative power. Uh, but the county councils in UK or, or, or in Romania, it's different. They have not the same competences. They have not the same uh, uh, financial uh, possibilities. Um, so that's, uh, that's very, uh, very different. And of course, one region is one region at AER. Uh, we are the political voice of those uh, regions and we try to lobby for the regions, with the regions, towards the European institutions. So the small uh, Swedish region have the same vote as Bavaria? Yes, of course. Ah, good. <laughs> so you, that's a political definition, administrative, administrative and political. It's a political uh, uh, definition, but of course in some countries uh, there are no regions, no, uh, let's say, uh, uh, regions um, defending by uh, politicians. I take the example of uh, uh, Portugal. We have, five, we have six uh, administrative uh, uh, regions, and uh, so the, 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 the presidents or the, the governors or the directors, they are directly uh, nominated by the uh, national level, okay. except, of course, the Azores and Madeira. Okay. And David, uh, what kind of definition do you have historically at BBC? How do you define your regions? Um, we, uh, I think we defined our regions originally by how we could build our transmitters. Uh, so the sense of regional identity in, uh, in England is, is probably weaker than in many other European countries. Uh, the further away you are from London, the stronger the sense of a, of, of a separate region. Uh, and we are... Uh, broadcasting to what the transmitters gave us 60 years ago and we have almost used those transmitters to define regions so there are some parts of England where it is a television transmitter that has decided uh, the, the shape uh, of the region but it is still the case I think for, for many of uh, our viewers that they would choose something more local if we could provide it we have, we have given them something uh, in both population and, and geography that is probably bigger than they think of as a local area. Have um, you changed it during the years, kind of directed the transmitters differently? We have split some of the regions in two for part of the time we broadcast as a way of trying to deal with the, the issue of the, the size of some of those regions and, and the populations. You know, some of our regions are more than five or six million strong 
and uh, it is difficult to, to get that sense of localness for that size of, of community. Okay, so in the beginning it was a governmental technical decision. Where do we put our... Yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the, all the backdrop to this session is that uh, we had a CIRCOM uh, summit in Dublin earlier this year and 20-something managers turned up and it, uh, uh, it, the discussion displayed that uh, almost everyone in one or another sense were redrawing the regional map, trying to find uh, uh, the audience in another way, trying to uh, redirect the transmitters or reorganize the organization because it felt a bit uh, obsolete. One of these organization, organizations were Olaf's. Uh, where and why and how do you define your uh, regions, the region? Why are the regions like they are in Sweden? By the same reasons really as the BBC. The region was defined how we, how we could put our transmitters and cover the country in the most efficient way. And that, thereby we, our regions are not uh, as maybe the, the, the people or the inhabitants, the perception of a region. Uh, we try to do that, come closer to the viewers by splitting uh, uh, transmitters, by uh, trying to go more local, trying to do additions, trying to do um, extra content on the web and trying to get a further reach. But historically, uh, there, weren't, there were more of a... Um, technology-driven transmitter agenda on, on how the regions were started. And in fact, uh, it was driven by the military, the army in Sweden. Yes. Uh, how, to do, how to defend we, Sweden the were. best against Russia or yeah. Soviet Union. Exactly. Yeah. Is that the case in Britain as well, in England? <laughs> I think not, no. <laughs> no. Um, I think we split the country up as, as much as we could afford to at the time. Uh, and as I say, I think it's, it's, not, it's not quite how our viewers think of their, of their identity. So many of our regions, if the viewers could draw the map up and put the transmitters there, they would be smaller. They would make them smaller. Uh, and I think my remarks at the beginning about have we, have we thought about how people will consume video about the place where they live in, a, in a, an age where maybe linear television is weaker is, I think, quite a big challenge yeah. in an environment where perhaps by the natural inclinations of the viewers, the region is a bit too big. Uh, and I don't see what the, yes, what the online equivalent of regional television news on a, uh, on a mainstream channel is. And mm -hmm. I think the risk is people uh, end up consuming little little bits of video, but have no sense of identity out of that. And I, you know, as another example, I don't know what the online equivalent for current affairs is yet. So we, I think many people in this room are responsible for programs that are either half an hour long or have long investigative pieces of video journalism, like some of the fantastic stuff we saw last night. Uh, I don't know what the online equivalent is. I don't see it. And I think there is one. I think there's something in the online environment that you start not quite with a television eye, but with an online eye and create something deep and rich and engaging and makes you ask questions and scrutinize institutions, but I don't think we've found it yet. Let's stop there and go to the audience. Uh, hands up if you think that online is the future for news. We have a problem, don't we? No, we have an opportunity. Ah, in what way? <laughs> yeah. Because online opens up many other ways of, uh, of telling stories and of getting to audiences. And, uh, uh, you know, one of my observations about the BBC from last night was that we are very, very tied to our formats. You know, maybe more so than other European regional broadcasters, but our, our formats are uh, our straight jackets we put on ourselves in a linear environment in television. Online opens up, opens up all sorts of possibilities. Yeah. Uh, it's open. Uh, you have to wave if you want to interact with the panel. Uh, but uh, now we are warmed up, I believe. Uh, Costas. What's the difference? Um, <laughs> we should have started with this kind of dancing chairs. Uh, Kostas, uh, uh, if you have, would have been based in Athens, uh, would there be a difference to what you broadcasting, are broadcasting now from Thessaloniki? Absolutely. It seems and it sounds as an experiment. Uh, everybody in Greece has the possibility, has the 
can watch the programs uh, broadcasted by ET3. Yeah. But we are based in uh, the regional Greece, as it is written in the constitutional law of operation of ET3. This orientation gives us the chance uh, through news bulletins, news related programs and uh, magazines, every production is based in the needs and interaction with the uh, people in the regions. Uh, as we can uh, see uh, by gallops or asking people or uh, having them in our programs, there are a lot of people in Athens which are interested in what is happening in the region in culture, economy, sustainable development. A lot of people uh, in the center of the crisis want to go out of Athens and to try to find a new life and jobs in the regions. But uh, the most important of our philosophy is to, as I told you before, uh, to capture the audience's feeling and imagination and uh, make them co-producers. That was the experiment uh, we had the participation with the people tell the story, the documentary who was commented in uh, yes, this year. Yes, yeah. yes, we asked the people to give us photographs, documentaries, uh, films, uh, maps, uh, and other treasures of their personal and family history for the century of Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki uh, was uh, last year in uh, 12, uh, celebrating uh, a century a hundred years of its liberation. And we try to cooperate with the people, giving us the material and the treasure, and they turn it back into the form of the documentaries, authentic documentaries. It was a very amazing uh, process. And, uh, but couldn't you have done that from Athens? Is it, is it something special to work outside the main capital? Do you, do you have some extra ingredient? Well, we have to respect what... Uh, a central TV station has to do because we have the crisis, mm -hmm. we have uh, uh, national affairs, we have problems of the ministers and <laughs> the whole that thing. I think that the regional media, not only TV station, with the people uh, who are uh, uh, who have the inspiration and come with us uh, uh, on a special event is the future. Okay. Uh Working with the, the audience, uh, or people formerly known as the audience, now our colleagues maybe, one would say, um, is that the future in online? Anyone? Should we work more with the audience? I think we don't have a choice. If we want to survive, we need to work more with the audience and see ourselves as a, as a network builder or network connector rather than a broadcaster because the broadcasting days are over, I think. I think people want to interact, I think they want to, to be part of something bigger, uh, and I think we need to s provide that, that opportunity for people to, to contribute. Uh, there's an urge for that, and that is real making of this, this industry right now, how we can make that happen, really. Could that be uh, easier if you have a regional perspective uh, than a national perspective? to work with the audience? Uh, well, I, I, what I'd like to say is just how, how much the audience, when you're broadcasting locally or regionally, think they own you. And it's a different emotional relationship, I think. And the story, as I always tell, which went back to a focus group I saw when I was a television producer in regional television, was uh, it was a man who watched on the BBC, we have the national news followed by the, the regional news. And he said when he watched the national news, it was like a tablet of stone being handed down to him. And he watched it and he respected it. When our program came on, he had the right to throw his shoe at the television because he owns that program and if there's something wrong with it, he's very cross. And I think there's something quite profound there about the emotional relationship that we should create uh, with our viewers. They, they feel they own, they know us, and they own our programs. And I think that's very precious. Hmm. Any questions or remarks from the audience, please? Okay, you have to do better in the next sessions have to interact. Uh, when you hear about all these regions, Philip, the regional perspective, uh, what, what are your thoughts? Do you think it's really that important when we actually have Europe and nations trying to solve the problems? It works now. Uh,
congratulations. Yes, ah, it works. So Thank you. Congratulations to the technicians. <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, uh, Euronews has a European remit, and uh, it's difficult to, to report about Europe. As you know, Europe is uh, not a fashionable thing, uh, especially these times uh, of crisis throughout Europe. And it's a difficulty we share with uh, European institutions, and I, I would uh, uh, I share this view, I think, with uh, the European Parliament, which is supporting CIRCOM. And um, for Euronews, it's difficult to, to, to make things uh, uh, interesting and uh, affordable to everybody in Europe. So going through the regions, for us the regions and the, the regional televisions can be good partners uh, to, to reach the general population. And so first of all, uh, reporting about Europe is not only reporting about European institutions, which is sometimes a little uh, boring and uh, with a lot of repeat. So we try to, to make stories on a regional level, to, we, we send out, of course, our journalists to, to make local stories. And it's more interesting for people, for instance, in Galicia, to understand what's happening maybe uh, in Puglia in Italy or uh, uh, in Warsaw or in uh, Krakow in Poland than to hear again about uh, the European crisis in Brussels and the, uh, to see the, the ministers of finance uh, uh, slashing doors and uh, making uh, a few statements. So first of all, in terms of coverage, regions are very important for us. Secondly, in terms of uh, distribution of broadcasting, we would like to extend to the regional televisions what we've already done with the national television throughout Europe, because you may know that Euronews is a spin-off of the EBU, and EBU consists of uh, the partnership of national television, but we would like to extend this to the CIRCOM members, uh, and we have invented a, a program whose name is Euronews uh, Network, which is an opening to all the regional televisions. We have already, we've already started with, with a bunch of them, and so we would offer access to our programs, uh, the possibility to use our programs in a regional frame. I would say, for instance, if you have a, uh, uh, if you have a, a news program of one hour, uh, you can use your news content within the hour, and after that have a debate a uh, local debate at regional level uh, to uh, make things clearer to the audience, to make it more, uh, uh, I would say, uh, directly understandable uh, with a, a local, uh, a local application of uh, European uh, policies. I think it makes uh, things more understandable, more attractive, and in the end, it helps to common understanding throughout Europe. So Europe is a, not a diff, an easy thing to, to report about, and so we, we bank very much on the cooperation of regional television to, uh, to get the message through. This is, uh, by the way, I'm stepping out the, my role as a moderator. This is, uh, we have, a, CIRCOM have a very good uh, uh, co-production and, and cooperation with Euronews because we share this idea that it's, it's uh, possible to go global to connect the, uh, the different perspectives. And sometimes you need to be and have a local or regional perspective to explain what's happening in a, in a bigger context. Absolutely. I think it's uh, very important that uh, a local journalist uh, taking from, coming from the ground uh, make things more understandable for a general audience because uh, European policies are uh, sometimes very uh, uh, unattractive things to, to, to speak about. Yes. Um, changing the subject a bit here, uh, Pascal, you have the air to all the politicians in Europe, and you're the voice of them. Uh, Pascal is, by the way, one of Europe's best experts on lobbying towards the European Union, several books uh, that he has written. Uh, but just to us, can you tell us if uh, the politicians of Europe are happy with regional television in Europe? That's a difficult uh, question. Is it contributing to society? Yes, I, I guess it's no. I guess it's it's very important, and I totally agree uh, with uh, uh, with a colleague from uh, from Euronews. One sentence I disagree is to say that uh, Europe is not uh, uh, or is difficult to uh, uh, to explain. Uh, I think there are a lot of possibilities. We have, uh, uh, be we began a few, a few years ago to speak about the tales of Europe. So uh, little, uh, little tales about concrete uh, results uh, made by citizens, made by uh, uh, regional uh, stakeholders in the, in the regions. And that's, that's very important because um, the citizens 
are, in fact, those who will support Europe. It's not the case today. It's, if, if you take the last uh, uh, results of the Eurobarometer survey, it's not the case. But why? Uh, it's perhaps uh, due to uh, uh, wrong information from the national broadcast. I don't know. It's perhaps the case uh, due to the, to the national politicians. I take one example. Uh, I take uh, Mr. Uh, President Mitterrand, but I could take Schroeder or Tony Blair or whatever. If there is an EU Council in, in Brussels, and if it's not in favor of uh, France, uh, Mr. Mitterrand or, or Chirac, he stayed in Brussels with the logo of the EU, and he said, oh, chers amis, uh, ha, Brussels decides. I try to defend, but, but six months later, if it's, uh, let's say, positive for France, he don't stay in Brussels. He goes to the Elysee with two big French uh, flags, and he say, chers camarades, chers amis, I did it. It's good for France. But what do you think that the people think? Oh, that Brussels decided the, the, the wrong things. But it's not the truth. Every day, every day, the 27 diplomats, the 27 ministers are dealing with uh, decisions is that, is in, in Brussels. Yes, is that a yes or a no to the question? <laughs> no, I try to be diplomatic correct. But what, what I mean, uh, at the regional level, you can build the bridge between the citizens and Europe. It's a long-term work, but the regional broadcast, if they come and if they uh, show in a few minutes what are the concrete results with the structural funds, it's the first budget who is speaking about the structural funds at the national television? Nobody, nobody. It's the most, it's the biggest, uh, the biggest budget. But of course, every day we are speaking about Europe of defense, but it's only 1.7 billion in seven years. Mm -hmm. Structural funds is more than three, three, 300 billion euros in seven years, so quite different. We'll talk more about that later. Yeah. Uh, could I have a microphone to Gerard there, the, the tall Dutch guy in the middle? Uh, and I'll, he can prepare himself while I ask the next question. Olof and David, if you had the opportunity to change the regions in totally in the way you wanted, and you had to think of broadcasting and online at the same time, what would you do? I would try to go closer, creating smaller, smaller regions or local uh, hubs. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that, that you need the, um, the presence of, of, a, of a broadcasting house, but you need a presence of journalists, you need a presence of reporters, you need to have reporters and journalists that are uh, very deeply committed to the local area, that want to, to change society, that want to do to good things and good stuff for the society. Uh, and in combination with a, with a strong online uh, presence and a way of distributing the signal uh, technically on a more local in a, on a more local scale I think that that would make a big big change in how we uh, perceive public service uh, at least in, in Sweden uh, online, and the regional regional public service online go local go local online, online. go local and go as local as you can also um, in, 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 in broadcasting mm -hmm. but I don't know how long the broadcasting really will survive Today in Sweden, uh, the internet has uh, is, the internet consumption is bigger than uh, broadcasting and television consumption. Uh, almost every Swede has a smartphone. Every Swede is connected. Every minute, every day, you wake up with the phone, you sleep, go to sleep with the phone, and it's always on, and you always consume, always consume news. So it's it's the, the industry is rapidly changing, and we need to follow that, and we need to be be where the where the audience are, and uh, that means that we need to refocus and do something else, and and and, and be sure that the journalists can can survive. We used to uh, around the world where we were on top, and now it's a flat map. Now it's a flat map, and the audience go where they want to go. We can't control them anymore. Okay. David? Uh, well, I, I'd agree with all of that. I'd certainly uh, be more local if I could. If, if in this game you're giving me infinite resources. Um, uh, yes. Uh, did. Did, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'd be more local. I'd probably double the number of uh, television regions. But I think the other thing, just to make a, a slightly more serious point as well, would be certainly in England there is a, a growing failure by the commercial market in terms of good quality local journalism. 
So commercial radio, commercial television, and particularly local newspapers have been in financial decline and have reduced the number of journalists. And I think there is a growing responsibility on public service broadcasters to fulfill our, our public purposes, particularly in terms of uh, the scrutiny of local institutions. So I would invest heavily in that. I would, you know, I think we, there's a lot more that we, certainly I'm talking about the BBC in England, could do to invest in the way that we uh, to tell citizens about what our local institutions, our local authorities uh, are doing, how they might connect to the national government or to Europe, but in, in many other areas as well. And I think there's a, a growing responsibility on us in an internet world where it would appear the amount of commercial money to support local journalism is going to continue to decline. Apparently I got a question from somebody watching on internet online from a phone. <laughs> Uh, are you afraid of the new local competition that is not BBC? Well, no, just in the context of what I've just said, I, I, I think I welcome it more than being afraid of it because I, uh, I would also worry about, in the context of England, the sense of local and regional dying if everybody else gets out of it. Okay. Uh, if we are the only player, that's not good. Uh, so I welcome the, um, the local television, which is not before time. But they are uh, private. The news stations. They, they, they are going to try and make a business model out of this. And, um, You're skeptic. There will be competition. So while I welcome it from a strategic point of view, uh, there will be, apart from a, um, uh, a requirement that's been made of, of us via the license fee, we're going to buy some content from these new providers. Apart from that, we will compete with them. Okay. Uh, Gerard, you have a mic now. Uh, you're from uh, the Netherlands, and uh, as I understand it, your government wants to change everything in the broadcasting media scene, uh, and you're in the middle of it, running to court here and there. Uh, could you tell us what is happening in the Netherlands regarding the regional television stations? Uh, I can, yeah. Uh, is it on? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we've got, uh, last year in, in, in Malmo I told you about, but we've got a new government at, at this moment, um, but having the same plans. Uh, regional television or broadcasting, uh, including radio and online, is uh, totally separate from national uh, services. Um, they want to get a more close cooperation uh, between the two. Uh, that means a lot for our structure, of course, and for our future. Um, we're making plans for that. It should be um, uh, implemented by uh, January 1st, 2016, uh, I guess, but we have to discuss it all. Um, that merge, as I can say, so our uh, close cooperation of working together uh, should at least bring 25 million of euros of, of budget cut uh, to our services. And uh, you know, we are quite efficiently organized, I think, so we'll see it in programming. It will be less. Uh, you fear this development? Do you, f do you fear, the, fear this development? Is it uh, scary to you? It's difficult. It's not scary, but it's difficult to do. It's, it's, I think um, those kind of situations, you can always come stronger out of it as you go in. And we've got our um, uh, you know, problems too at this moment. Uh, looking at, at, at the regions and the borders, uh, of course, we've got regions also, but people are crossing borders uh, easily. Um, um, so it's, it's, it's from the, the, the audience view, we have to participate in what they want and don't look too much to the political view of it. Thank you. Pascal, sorry I interrupted you. No, I, I would uh, uh, react to uh, what my neighbors say about uh, the exclusion of, uh, of local and, and, and regional uh, uh, in England. I, I have the same feelings. I guess in uh, England you have uh, more than 150 county councils. Uh, we have only two members, uh, and one is very active, Hampshire. They are making with us lobby actions, political reports. There were elections last week. And uh, uh, the leader, of, uh, the, the, the councillor of Hampshire, was re-elected. And I guess uh, yesterday or tomorrow he will be uh, the next leader. What's so, your point? So my point is to, 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 to put Europe also in the, in, in the regional council. Uh, it's very important. Now they are excluded. We don't have any uh, uh, regional issues from, from uh, Great Britain. 
uh, the, the government cut the, the budgets for the regional uh, offices in, in, in Brussels. So uh, I guess the, the, the UK citizens are more and more, let's say, uh, outside of Europe. And, and that's, uh, that's a, retracting a, a, from yes, Europe. That's, yeah. that's a, a danger. And I think you, you have a, a big role to, to play in, in, uh, in this, to, to change. To the change. regional perspective yeah. can change yeah. it. Okay. Philip, you had something here about broadcasting and Internet. Yes, about uh, broadcasting and Internet. I think uh, uh, to say that uh, broadcasting uh, goes to a wide audience and Internet to a local audience is not exactly true because uh, broadcasting is very much limited by the networks you are using. Uh, it can be a terrestrial network, a cable, even a satellite. It's limited to a specific region or country. Whereas with, with the Internet, you go worldwide. And uh, our experience in Euronews is that through Internet, we have access to many more populations, uh, not only across Europe, but across the world, than via the broadcasting, which is uh, where you have gatekeepers, uh, which are cable and satellite operators. So Internet, in fact, is a good way uh, for regional uh, channels or for regional uh, uh, population to go worldwide and to, to go out of their own region and to cross messages uh, across the world and even to create communities, European communities or worldwide communities. For instance, if some people are interested with, uh, let's say, uh, environment, uh, they are not limited to their own region. Through the Internet, they can create a community which, is, uh, which goes far beyond their own region, and so they can uh, create a sense of Internet community uh, which uh, is new in, the, in world history, I would say. So, the, so the, 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 the local aspect is not only the, the only one which can be treated by Internet, but the global aspect can be treated as well, but targeting some specific communities. I think that would be part of uh, a lot of the sessions that we're going to see now. Since this is a broadcast, we're going to be on time and end now. Thank you. And thank you. Please.